Well, good morning. Welcome to Bible Baptist Church. We're able to stand and take your hymnal, hymn number 507. 507. Come thy fount. Hymn number 507. We'll sing that first and last verse. 507. Come thou fount of every blessing, to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, comfort songs of loudest praise. Teach me songs, melodious sonic, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. On that last, oh, to grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. 506, Blessed Assurance. Amen. We'll sing all three verses of 506. <laughs> Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect divine, visions of wrath. remain standing. We're going to look to the Lord in prayer. I'm glad you're here today. Brother Larry, you can come on up. Brother Larry, carefully pray for us this morning. Uh, pray for um, Haley uh, Silvertooth, and um, she's 13 years old, and she needs our prayers. Also, Brother Charles Best's uh, sister, uh, Jerry Sue uh, Mitchum, she needs our prayers as well. Uh, their family with, with uh, cancer. Miss Lydia had some chest pains this week. They did a heart cath, and that came back clear. And that is a blessing. Amen. Pray for Brian Moffitt. That's Miss Cindy's son, and he's been sick. And we've had a lot of people sick, um, including myself. Amen. And I'm glad to be back this morning. I was out last Sunday, and I pray probably in 30 years, as far as just being sick, I probably missed a handful of services, so I never miss. But um, anyway, I'm glad to be back today. And so, uh, have any of y'all ever been to Colorado? Been to Colorado? Anybody been to Colorado? That's kind of how I feel right now when you go to Colorado and you get in the mountains and it's kind of like you feel like it's kind of hard to get a breath. I mean, you can breathe, but you're still kind of, so that's kind of where I'm at this morning. So if I go belly up, then one of these other guys will just grab my notes and continue on, okay? So we've got 
everything covered. So who's covering for you? Nobody. So I'm going to call somebody, amen, uh, if I need to. But anyway, I'm just trusting the Lord to help me get through. But I haven't had any sick fever or anything like that all the way through, amen. So that's a blessing. But I've had some other issues with sore throats and all that, but doing better. And uh, how many of y'all prayed for me? Amen. Yeah, thank y'all. Love you. Appreciate that very much. And uh, anyway, uh, Brother Larry gave testimony. One of the ladies in our jail ministry been meth-free for four years. Amen. And uh, her name is Miss Stewart. And I'm so thankful it's been meth-free, no drugs, four years. That's a blessing, amen? amen. And that is a blessing. Usually uh, uh, they gain a little weight, too, whenever they stop using and abusing their bodies, amen? And um, probably Pastor Larry Hudson, he pastors First Baptist Church in Parker's Chapel. Brother Joe Curtis is here this morning. Wave at me, Brother Joe. And you got a good name, Brother Joe. That's my name, Joe, also. So anyway, uh, he uh, took a picture of one of our gospel tracks. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. And... Uh, had on his phone, amen, it came out this morning, this preacher's in the hospital, Brother Larry's real sick, so we want to remember to lift him up, and we've known Brother Larry Hudson for, for years and years, but anyway, uh, Brother Joe, thank you for coming our way today, okay? All right, now there was a lot, a lot of other prayer requests, our missionaries and military and so forth on the list, and uh, we've been praying uh, for them, that God would be with them. Brother Larry, come on and pray for us this morning. When I came into Sunday school this morning, the pastor said, uh, I got a book for you. And I said, okay, thank you. And he said, it's, a, it's about a gangster that found the Lord, and I thought of you. <laughs> and I said, well, thank you, I think. <laughs> Appreciate that. And so uh, even though it's true, I mean, I'm so, but I, thank you. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the day. I, I thank you that our pastor is well enough to try to preach, and, Lord, I just... Uh, I want to lift up the uh, people on the prayer list, Lord. There's people that would, would like to be here, Lord, and just for different, different situations, illness and weather, and they can't, Lord. And I just hope that uh, you'd reach out and touch them and give them a blessing, Lord, that they can make it when they wish. And Lord, I just want to ask you that uh, you honor us with your Holy Spirit today and have your will and way with us and bless the preaching and the singing, Lord, and we're just going to do everything we can to lift you up, Lord, and praise you. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Make it peace.
Stand hymn number 516. We're marching to Zion. We'll sing that first verse of hymn number 516. <clears throat> Come, we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus around the throne and thus around the throne we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to zion the beautiful city of god on that second let those refuse to sing who never knew our god but children of the heavenly king, but children of the heavenly king, may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. On that last, then let our songs abound with every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high, to fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching up or to Zion, the beautiful city of God. All right, we're going to sing our theme song for this year, Ringing Doorbells. Ringing Doorbells. Pastor, you want to lead that for us? You feel up to it? I don't know if I got it. Okay. You want to try it? All right, let's I try it now. Down. A little theme song, Ringing Doorbells, Ringing Doorbells, Ringing Doorbells for my Lord. Wearing out my shoes, telling God's good news, ringing doorbells for my Lord. How many, how many gospel tracts did the young people pass out yesterday? 678 gospel tracts, just like he took a picture of and uh, passed out yesterday. Had several people accept Christ as their Savior. Isn't that a blessing? And uh, we thank the Lord. I'm reaching here for one, and I think I gave my last one out just a minute ago. Amen. Oh, here's one right here. Amen. Right here, passing these gospel tracts out and... and Ringing doorbells for my Lord. Let's try it. Ringing doorbells, ringing doorbells, ringing doorbells for my Lord. Wearing out my shoes, telling God's good news. Ringing doorbells for my Lord. Real easy. Okay, here we go. Ringing doorbells, ringing doorbells, ringing doorbells for my Lord. Wearing out my shoes, telling God's good news. Ringing doorbells for my Lord. Good, got the Bible way to heaven on the back. So I led it once, now we're going to let our music director lead it the second time, now that I've trained him. Yep. All right, here we go. Ringing doorbells, ringing doorbells, ringing doorbells for my Lord. Wearing out my shoes, telling God's good news, ringing doorbells for my Lord. Good. Thank you. you. May be seated, and we'll have the ushers come forward at this time. And uh, lots and lots and lots of blessings. Okay, we were recently able to mail 40 cases of Bibles going to these countries. Y'all mailed them. Amen. What a blessing! Uganda, Canada, the Netherlands, Zambia, Africa, India, Malta, Honduras, Paraguay, um, Guyana, Mexico, and Greece. Somebody say Amen right there. Got all those Bibles going out around the world to people who've never had a copy of the Word of God. Many of you know that we attended recently the National Church Planning Conference in Oklahoma uh, City, Oklahoma, and we were able to give away $4,700, somebody say amen right there, to help get churches started around America. Okay, let me just give you some of the places that we helped. Uh, David Burba uh, Burbaker and Mountain Light Baptist Church in Enclaw, in in Washington. Uh, Jeffrey Casper um, uh, planted a, planting a church in 
Woodland Hills Baptist Deaf uh, in Tyler, Texas. So he's a deaf man, and we were able to help him, and that was a blessing. And then uh, David Currington, Liberty Baptist Church in Springer, Oklahoma. Uh, Jarrett Estramado, uh, Eagle, Eagle, ba uh, Eagle Point Baptist Church in Eagle Point, Oregon. Uh, Zachary Kinsman, New Heights Baptist Church in Newtown, Sandy Hook, Connecticut. Remember Sandy Hook where the, all the kids got killed years ago, that shooter? We helped them get a church started there, amen. Somebody say, uh, that's a blessing, amen. Uh, Sandy Hook needs more churches. Michael Lassiter, uh, New Northwest Baptist Church in El Paso, Texas. Scott Pinnell, uh, church plant uh, in Cornerstone Baptist Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Zach Rushaw, Pelham Baptist Church in Pelham, New Hampshire. Uh, Keene Baptist Church in Keene, New Hampshire. I've never even been to New Hampshire. Uh, Kenneth Spam in Wilburton, uh, Oklahoma, planting a church there. Heath Van Zant, uh, Antioch Baptist Church in Rome, Texas. Daniel Ward, uh, Revival Baptist Church in Riverside, California. Uh, Josh, anyway, you get the idea, okay? I mean, we, we help 30 some odd of them. And listen to this, Jake Weedo is my youngest son. Jake's planning Gospel Light Baptist Church in, in Lafayette. The church is about six months old. They have a building and all of that and just lots and lots of blessings. But at the conference, uh, they raised uh, $32,110 for Jake's church. Isn't that a blessing? And all together, they ra raised $810,000, $821,000, I think, all together uh, for all the different church planners. Isn't that a blessing? And uh, just a tremendous uh, meeting there. And uh, Brother Burton's church, they gave away maybe like uh, $7,000. They had some money they put back for that conference. And so, uh, Brother Burton's out of our church. Amen. So anyway, we just thank the Lord for the opportunity. Okay. And, uh, to help churches get started. And Lord knows, uh, when we walk out the doors of our church, we're walking into the mission field. Amen. People need the Lord all over the country and America has really gone away from God and we need more Bible preaching, Bible teaching churches. Amen. And that's kind of a no brainer if you love the Lord. Okay. And so we thank the Lord for these young men coming out and getting ready to go out and get the job done for the Lord. Well, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for praying for me. Again, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. And um, my youngest daughter, Jenna, said, Daddy, you need to put a chair up there like Uncle Bob does in case you get to feeling bad. You can sit in that chair. And, uh, but anyway, I'm, I don't have a chair. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're going to make it by the grace of God. But thank you for praying for us, okay? All right, let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Brother Hank, why don't you come up and, and pray for us this morning? Let's pray. Dear Lord, come first day. I pray that you can keep us safe, Lord, and I pray that you can give Brother J.D. the strength t today, Lord, and I pray that you can uh, bless the message now and bless the offering now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Right. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Luke chapter 16. We have Brother Freddie's family come and sing for us, and, and uh, there'll be a blessing. Brother Freddie and them had a, a cancellation or reschedule, and Brother Freddie's an evangelist out of our church. Brother Freddie's going to be preaching tonight, so I'm just kind of trying to get through this morning and, and, and get some rest this afternoon. But anyway, um, um, I guess we'll tag Brother Freddie. If something happens to me, Brother Freddie, you can come up and bail me out, okay? 
But uh, anyway, I'm glad you're here, and we love you, and I do thank you again for just your presence here today. And Brother Joe, I appreciate you being coming our way today, and I hope you get a blessing. And I know last week while I was gone, we had some first-time visitors here, and that was a blessing. We love the Reed family. Uh, Brother Freddie's an evangelist out of our church. He travels around America, preaches all over the country, and, and uh, the kids are a blessing. Miss Janie's the... Uh, the, 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 the matriarch of the family. She's a blessing. We love Miss Janie. And we will have a basket in the back for Brother Freddie and them today. Uh, most of you all know that they live off love offerings of local churches, um, you know, as they travel around. And so when they're here, that means that they're not there receiving a love offering. So we try to be a blessing to them where they're sending church. I'm their preacher. And uh, so if you could do a little something for them, I know it would be a blessing to them. They're not going to be able to be here on the anniversary Sunday. So uh, I know that today's kind of their day to just, just thank the church and, and what a blessing church has been to them and to all of us over all these years and be sure and be mindful of the 30th anniversary coming up the first Sunday in February that'll be February the 6th and we do have a lot of different families coming back in that are out serving the Lord in other places brother Bob's youngest son Aaron pastors Temple Baptist in New Iberia Louisiana my son Jake's in in Lafayette and brother Burton's up in Philly and all of them are coming back in for the 30th anniversary and had a blessing and uh, I think Brother Steve, Miss Betty Simmons, Dave and Jessica Debman are planning on coming back in. Uh, my grandson Dylan from Oklahoma City, uh, they're trying to come back in. So anyway, I'm excited about everybody coming back in. We're going to try to, but we got a lot of out-of-town visitors, so that means we've got to cook up a lot of extra food. How many of y'all worry about stuff like that? You want to make sure you have plenty of food for your family when it's time? Yeah, I, that's, that's me. So anyway, we're going to have to uh, throw some extra beans in the pot and all that good stuff because uh, I want to be on, uh, you know, have, have a good spread for all our visitors from out of town. Okay? All right, Brother Freddie. One day they nailed a carpenter to a rugged tree. Thinking he would never build again. There they nailed him through his hands and feet. But still he carried out the master plan. Jesus built a bridge. Jesus built a bridge. The, the, the Father looked from heaven to the world below, seeing there was no way to claim his own. But to the world, God's son, the master builder, had to go to make a way to lead God's children home. Jesus built a bridge to heaven so that I could have a way. Built a bridge with only three nails and two pieces of wood. With one rugged cross, Jesus built a bridge.
Thank you, kids. Let's sing that song, Last Blood, Last Blood. I appreciate y'all allowing us, uh, giving us the latitude to try out songs on y'all. Amen? And that's called being a guinea pig. That's not always good. But we get there, and if it doesn't clear preacher, we don't go other places with it. Amen? He gives us thumbs up, thumbs down. He's got veto power. Amen? And he says, uh, I don't know about that one. And uh, then we wait. Amen? And then try it out on the rest of the people. And so uh, thank y'all for being praying for us. And we may not hit all the notes right, but we mean every word we're singing. And we thank God for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for a church that preaches the old message. Amen. It ain't going to change. Ain't about to change. We don't. We got the answer. Hey, don't criticize what our answer is unless you got a reasonable substitute as a solution. That's what Bob Jones Sr. said, the old preacher. He said, don't criticize what our answer is unless you got a reasonable substitute as a solution. You think, well, I don't know about that, that old blood message, the slaughterhouse religion. What do you know that will take, a, take a drug, uh, drugs away from somebody? What do you know that will clean somebody out on the inside and give them a bath inside? I don't know anything else that can beat it. And uh, ain't nothing comes even close, and we thank God that message, it started at the beginning of the Bible, and then it carries all the way through, and it's right here good at the end. Listen to the song, Last Blood. When man sin in the garden, that sin Jehovah could not condone. And the blood shed of animals could not forever our sin atone. But the Son had compassion. He said, Father, I'll be your lamb. So once again, blood was shed as the soldiers nailed his hands it's been three days since heaven watched their prince of glory die his followers are in mourning for in that tomb their Savior lies. But at the grave something is happening as that stream I've lost my hope. Angels rise in anticipation for the sun. flowers out of the way please I appreciate Miss Wilma preparing the flowers and all that and uh, it would break my heart if those got broke this morning some of y'all are looking at me like what in the world 
Yeah, amen. Miss Lydia, you better move them back behind Miss Deanna. Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, put them in the hall. That'll be good. All right, you have your Bibles there in uh, Luke chapter. Brother Freddie, thank you all for singing. Miss Janie, youngins, thank you all. It was a blessing. That was a good, good stuff, and we enjoyed that. You have your Bibles there in Acts chapter number 16, and um, we've been preaching through the book of Acts on Sunday mornings, and I've really enjoyed the book of Acts and a lot of, lot of action going on here. And, and uh, anyway, we just thank the Lord for the Word of God. Amen. So we're in Acts chapter 16, and uh, it's, it's kind of an introduction to... Uh, the, uh, a journal of the second missionary journey of the Apostle Paul. And so it's a report on, on Paul's famous experiences while he was in Philippi. And uh, Timothy would be chosen to be Paul's travel companion, okay? And, and later he would uh, become one of the leaders in the, in the early church. So Acts chapter 16, verse number 1, the Bible says, Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. We sure do. Thank you for what our eyes have seen and our hearts have felt, Lord, this morning already. Lord, now it's preaching time, and I thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. And I pray that you'd speak to our hearts in the next few moments, Lord, and and just help me now to be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we have the first mention here of Timothy in the Bible. His name is mentioned about 24 times in the Word of God. And, and we see the first place of, of Timothy here. Uh, then came he to Derby and, uh, and Lystra. And these two towns were spoken of together uh, in regards to the, the first missionary journey. And Lystra was where Paul and Barnabas healed that crippled man. You remember that in Acts chapter 14? We've already kind of, verses 4 through 15, we kind of came through there and and preached on that. And they healed the crippled man, but then he kind of had to fight the people off because the people were attempting to honor Paul and Barnabas as gods. Remember that? They wanted to worship man. And when man didn't do the healing, God did. Are you all with me on that? Remember that story? And so also at Lystra, Paul was stoned, okay? He was stoned and they thought that Paul was dead. And from the stoning, and but he revived and, and went on to Derby and to other towns to minister the gospel. And it appears that Timothy was probably from Lystra, okay? And uh, think about the parents of Timothy, okay? It says a certain woman, um, a certain um, a certain woman which was a Jewess, it says, and believed, but his father was a Greek. So Timothy was half Jew and half Gentile. And uh, first and second Timothy bear his name. Uh, his mama was a believer. And uh, hold on to Acts 16 there and turn back to uh, uh, Second Timothy. Second Timothy in your Bible there. Hold on to Acts because we're coming right back there. But turn to Second Timothy chapter number one. Second Timothy chapter number one. And I just want to read you a little bit here in Second Timothy chapter number one. Just a little background reading we could call it. 2 Timothy 1.1. 1, 1. The Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. Look what he says here now. To Timothy, my dear, dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance, watch this now, the unfeigned faith. Unfeigned means like without pretense. It's not hypocritical. It's not fake. It's real. The unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I was going to read on down through verse 13, or verse 14. But anyway, just good stuff about Timothy's life. Timothy's life and Timothy being a good young man and his parents. Now... I want you to notice that Timothy's mother, Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, were believers. And they helped Timothy. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and look at verse number 15. 
2 Timothy 3.15. The Bible says, And that from a child, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which were able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Wow. What a blessing that he had a mama and he had a granny that loved Jesus and they taught him as a little child about the Lord. I don't know about his dad, if his dad was a believer. But I want to think for a moment in verse number 2, back in Acts chapter number 16. In verse number 2, it says, um, verse number 2 says, which was well reported of, it's talking about Timothy now, Timotheus, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Wow. I want to think about Timothy's character this morning. It's a big deal, young people, and everybody here today, that Timothy had Christian character, okay? And uh, yes, he was a certain disciple, and, and uh, you know, the Apostle Paul spoke about Timothy unto Timothy, my own son in the ministry, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul was the one responsible for Timothy's conversion. No doubt this happened on his first missionary journey. But you know, it does matter, um, you know, our, our testimony and, and what other people say about you, your character. Uh, character, my dad used to say, you'll either have character or you'll be a character. And there's been times in my life when I was a character. And uh, let me just recognize some of our young people now uh, for a moment. And uh, our young people that went to the, uh, the, the, the volleyball and basketball tournament, would you stand if you went to the basketball and volleyball tournament? Would all you young people just stand for just a moment? All right. We just finished up a basketball and volleyball tournament with our, with our Christian school. Our girls finished third in volleyball in what we call the Junior A tournament. And uh, then our, our varsity team actually plays this coming week. And, and anyway, all these young people went to the, to, the, to the state tournament, and our boys won basketball. That was a blessing, amen. And uh, we beat uh, the team from Malvern, the host team, in their own gym. And uh, that was a blessing, amen. And we like to win, and our kids like to win. Um, now, uh, how many of y'all, if you went out yesterday and you passed out tracks, I want you to remain standing if you, if you went yesterday. Just, just stay standing. I know Arlington lives across the way and didn't get to come. Okay. Isn't that a blessing? Yeah. These kids love the Lord. And uh, it's good for us as adults, uh, you know, the people in Iconium and Lystra, they, they recognize that, hey, there's something special about Timothy. You know why? Because Timothy had a mama, and Timothy had a granny, and Timothy got saved by the grace of God. And God, he had Christian character. Yeah. And it does matter, adults, it does matter, grandmas and grandpas and mamas and dads, it does matter how we live. The Bible says, be ye holy, for I am holy. So it does matter how we live. Now, I know these kids, thank you all, you can be seated. I'm going to get Dalton and Jack to come here, and, and, uh, and I'm just going to get them to stand here and and just kind of toss the basketball back and forth to each other. Come over here, Jack, and y'all can do that. And, and I'm going to get uh, Emily and, uh, uh, yeah, Casey, you might take your sweater off. Y'all need to probably take your sweater off. I'm just going to have y'all bump some balls. Can y'all do that? Or I think so. You need to take your watch off. Are you good? All right. I mean, just over and over and over again. Brother Joe said the other night in a message that he, uh, let's just toss 10 and then switch. I won't break any lights. You'll see now why I took the flower out so they don't kill each other. You can back up a little bit. Yeah, you can back up just a little bit. Yeah, there you go. That's good. All right, give her your target. Yeah, there you go. Give her your target. Now, these kids do this every day. Every day they go to practice. And every day, I mean, it's, it's like, y'all, we want them to be able to do it by reflex. We want them to be able to catch a pass and toss a pass. Uh, you know, subconsciously, we want them to do that. Are y'all with me on that? I mean, day after day, practice after practice, layup after layup, bump set, spike it. That's the way we like it, over and over, thousands and thousands and thousands of touches. And, and man, we teach the fundamentals. As Vince Lombardi, the old football coach, said, teach the fundamentals and good things will happen. And we're not trying to razzle-dazzle anybody. We're just trying to master the basics in volleyball and basketball and watching our kids grow up and they have an understanding of how the game is supposed to be played. It's not rocket science. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Are you all with me? 
I mean, just over and over and over again. All right, Andrew, you and Bibi come up. Y'all can relieve these two over here. I can tell they're already getting tired. All right, uh, Catherine, um, Abby, what do you think? You good to go? And uh, Catherine, are, are you good? Or you want me to get Arlington? You can do it. All right, come on. All right, yeah, go for it. Now you see why we took the vase out of the way so they wouldn't break uh, anything. Not that I don't trust them, of course, but uh, I, I'm just saying this now. Please look, listen to me. We're just this is just a little illustration. But I'm saying Timothy had a mama, and Timothy had a granny that instilled some things, some some godly Christian character. In, in, in the lives of Timothy, amen, and people could see a difference in Timothy. He wasn't like everybody else, so to speak. You know why? Because he had a Savior. He had Jesus Christ in his heart. And listen, I'm just telling you, hey, we teach our kids, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. We teach them to have respect for those that are in authority, amen. It's old school, and it's just, I mean, just same old, same old things that, you know, I had to go to the bedroom for a smart mouth. Back talking my mother, bending over the bed, and my dad tanning my hide, not because he didn't love me, but because he was trying to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. And because my dad taught me to respect authority, and my dad taught me to love my mom, I now love my wife. We've been married uh, 40 some odd years now. 40, we were married in 1980, coming up on 42 years. Wow, Brother Joe just turned 41. Wow. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. All right. Thank you, girls. That's good. All right. Arlington, you're here. I see you. Who can go with Arlington? Maddie. Okay, Maddie, come on up here. All right. Let's have uh, Hank and, and, uh, and uh, Galen. These guys get tired so fast. Yeah, just, 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 just passing back and forth, back and forth, over and over and over and over and over and over again. We couldn't have done this when we had our chandeliers, amen. We'd have glass flying everywhere and all that. We now have LED lighting, whatever that means, so it's a brighter light. But anyway, y'all don't break anything. All right. Hey, what are you saying, what are you saying, preacher? I'm glad that they know how to do all this stuff like here, but I'm more glad, Brother Freddie, that yesterday all these same kids were out passing out tracks, 600 some odd tracks they passed out for Jesus. Miss Lydia was saying, I, I just filled the track rack up. I thought I was going to get in a fight with her before church. I said, it's empty, Miss Lydia. The track rack, she's like, had to come around and look like she didn't believe the preacher. And I said, they passed out a bunch of tracks yesterday afternoon. And so she had to, she said, I should have never opened my mouth. I should have just did what she told me to do the first time. And she was a preaching herself a sermon going on out the door. And that blessed my heart, amen. And uh, so anyway, hey, listen, y'all. I mean, really. It does matter. It does matter. It does matter how we live. It does matter what we put into our children's lives. It does matter. Our example, our example does matter. Thank you all. Y'all can be seated. Good job. Thank you all. You can put the ball down here. Yeah. Over here. Now, everybody please listen to me. 20 years ago, 20 years ago, we started a program across town over there at 1901 Detroit, over there in, in the Thunder Zone, and uh, by, by, by Maddox Park. Maddox Park, the swimming pool's on one end, and we're kind of up on the hill on the other end. And we had the old building there, and it, it's old gymnasium, old dome-shaped gym, gymnasium with hardwood floors. Got classrooms up in the front, and it was a fixer-upper. And we put a lot of different projects. We, we've done like 30-something projects on that building. Brother Ricky Ball and others helped us fix that old building up over the years. It's a blessing. New hot water heaters, new lights, new central heat and air. I mean, we, that thing's come a million miles. It's still just an old gym. Oh, but listen, for the last 20 years in the summertime, little boys and girls come in off of our bus routes and all across the south side over there and our church kids. They all come together and we work on character traits. Man. Character traits. Really? Yeah, character traits. I have a list of them here. There's 49 of them. It's unbelievable. Alertness versus carelessness. Alertness. Be aware of what is taking place around me so I can have the right responses. Attentiveness versus distraction. Let me have your attention, please. I'm distracted real easy. How many of y'all are like that? 
I'm very, I, I get my, my attention span is not very long and I can wander off real fast. Attentiveness versus distraction. Attentive showing the worth of a person or task by giving my undivided concentration. Hey, these little kids, they've never heard this kind of stuff before. First and foremost, you know what we tell them about? We tell them about Jesus Christ and we get them saved by the grace of God. But then we begin to work on their character. Why? So that over and over and over again, week after week after week, they can bump the ball, so to speak, in life. Week after week, they they can learn how to pass the ball in life. Man, I love kids. And kids grow up. And they need the Lord. And everybody wants to fuss and cuss about how bad it is and all that, but nobody wants to help a little child. And for a long time now, we've just, we've, we haven't said anything. We've just been helping little children. And a lot of them are fatherless children. A lot of those little kids don't even know who their daddy is. And we love widow women. There's a lot of people listening this morning via Facebook and, and YouTube, and I don't even know how to do all that stuff. I don't have Facebook. I don't, I don't know how to do YouTube, but we got smart people in our church and know more about that stuff than me, and There are people listening this morning all around. I was in Brookshire's yesterday, and the manager of the deli in Brookshire's, at the second Brookshire's, Miss Tanya White. Miss Tanya comes to our church when she can, but she works on Sundays. And she said, Brother J.D., I I was trying to order a couple dinners, but she wanted to come around from the counter and talk to me. And she said, Brother J.D., I I was going to call you yesterday, but she said, you remember that devotional book that you gave us several years ago? And I said, yeah. She said, I promised God this year that before I opened my phone, before I looked at my phone, before I looked at the newspaper, I was going to read my devotion for the day, before I did anything else. And she said, oh, preacher, it's been so good. She can't even come to church. She watches it online. Man, that's a blessing. She watches it when she can. I'm glad that's available there. For those who can't get out and those who know how to get on there, I'm glad that they're tuned in this morning. But I'm saying to all of us this morning, listen to me. The Apostle Paul and other people noticed something about Timothy's life that was different. And listen, hey, the world might not have cared about Timothy, but godly people could see that, wow, Timothy was something special about Timothy. Are you all with me? Something special about Timothy. Let me have the youth choir come up. Y'all come on up to the youth choir. Brother Joe, let's grab a song. Let's just grab whatever song you want to grab. I'm going to let the youth choir sing one for y'all this morning in closing. I'm saying to y'all this, please listen to me. You get on down to verse 4, Brother Freddie, and verse number 5, and, and man, it's like that church that, I mean, it wasn't just, it wasn't just a, a, a church that preached the gospel on Sunday, Brother, Brother Chad. It was a church where, where every member of the church was, was busy, man, passing out tracts and, and talking to people about Jesus. Every member in the church was, not just on Sundays. It wasn't just an evangelistic, and the church was started, man, it started hitting on all cylinders. And that church was growing, and it was thriving, and, 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 and it was, that church was strong. It was edified, it was being built up. Why? Because it had the blessing of God. It had the blessing of God. Why? Because it was fulfilling the Great Commission. It wasn't a, 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 a y'all come church. It was a go out into all the world and preach the gospel church. And there's a difference, y'all. There's a lot of churches that are full. My house is full, as the old song says, but my field is empty. And I'm glad, man, we've got to get the seed out of the barn, man. There's a world going to hell, and, and you and I, if you're saved by the grace of God, we, we know that. Man, we know, uh, you know all about Jesus Christ, but we've got to get the word out. We've got to tell the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son to condemn the world, but that the world through him, that the world through him might be saved. You can blow it off and you can laugh it off or whatever you want to do, but that person you work with for, for 35 years, that person's going to heaven or hell. Sure shooting, he's going somewhere. When life on this earth is over, see, if he's trusted Christ as his Savior, he's going to heaven. And if he's done nothing, he's going to go to hell because he hasn't believed. He that believeth not, the Bible says in John 3, 18, is condemned already. If you don't do anything, you're going to die and go to hell. We don't want you to die and go to hell. Man, 
Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Huh. Wow. Aren't you glad you're not going to hell no more? All right, let's sing it out, young people. Let's sing it out. Let me, let me read verse. Let me just read you these couple, two more verses and then we'll let them sing this. Let me read these two verses. Acts 16. Talking about Timothy. He was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra in Iconium. Him would Paul have to go with him and they took and circumcised him because of the Jews. And by the way, he didn't have to get circumcised for salvation. It was just the Jews were getting hung up on circumcision because his daddy was a Greek. He got circumcised. Paul did. He was circ- or Timothy did. He was circumcised for the sake of testimony. Galatians 6.15 says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, a new creature in Christ. And Paul already talked about that uh, in, 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 in Acts chapter 15 that some of the Jews were saying you had to be circumcised because they were choking on Gentiles being saved. I'm going to tell you something. God is a whosoever will God. And God wants the whole world to be saved, Jew or Gentile. The Bible goes on to say here, and as they went through the cities, wow, Brother Freddie, as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep. And that decree was salvation by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that were ordained of the apostles and the elders which were at Jerusalem. So it had the stamp of approval of the, the old timers in the Jerusalem church said, no, you don't have to be circumcised. You can get saved by the grace of God. Verse number 5, and so were the churches established. That means they were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. Wow. Why did they increase in number daily? Because they were spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God looked down from heaven. He found a church that he could bless. And it wasn't just the preacher, amen. It was the people of the church that were strong in the faith. And they were witnessing and telling the world what Jesus Christ had done for them. You listen as the youth choir sings. The angry crowd cried out to crucify. They nailed him to a rugged cross and left him there to die. They gambled for the royal robe he wore, not knowing they had crucified my Lord. He bore the sin and shame of all mankind. And as he hung there dying, I was on his mind. His sacrifice of love, some don't appreciate. But I would like to speak and set the record straight. That's my God, and I love Him. Man. That's my Jesus, He died for me. For all the world to hear, I'll say it loud and clear. That's my God, that's my God. Some say He's nothing more. In a fairy tale He's just a myth or legend And his presence is not real His word is not correct politically They curse and mock his name Defiantly Oh, but time has never changed The changeless one Man. Their lives cannot disprove the existence of His Son. Though some may be content to just sit by, everyone will stand and testify. That's my God, and I love Him. Yeah, I yeah. Jesus, He died for me. 
head tonight I'll, or this morning. I, I don't know about you, but man, I, I want to be a good pattern for my, my kids and me and my grandkids. I haven't always been all that I ought to be as a dad and as a papa, but man, I, we need another generation of Timothys, amen, another generation of young people who had some mamas and some grannies that loved God and had a man of God that loved them, and we poured our lives into the younger ones, amen, so that when we were gone to heaven, there'll be something left behind, amen, if the Lord should tarry us coming. Let's stand this morning. We have our invitation. If you're here this morning and you're lost and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you came to the right place. Right now, you can step out and come. The piano's playing softly. God bless you. Don't wait on anybody else. The time to do business with God is when God is, is doing business with you. Well, He's a good God. Amen. I know He's put up with a lot of junk for me. And I love Him. I do. And that's my God. And I love Him. Man, I've given Him a hard time. And I haven't always been what I ought to be. I sure haven't. I've said things I shouldn't say and done things I shouldn't do. But I'm telling you, He's my God. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Man, God loves you this morning. You came to the right place. You got some problems this morning. Hey, you come to the right place. God can help you with your problems. I don't care if it's a financial problem or a family problem or whatever kind of problem you got, health issues. Hey, God is there for you. He loves you. He's touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He's a good God. He sure is. And He's my God. Man, what a blessing. I'm kind of hit and miss sometimes. I, I kind of, sometimes I read my Bible and pray and all that like I should. And then there's other times where I get off track just like you do. Just like you do. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I'm not as close as I should be. Then there's other times where I feel like I'm sitting in His lap and I'm doing real good. Hitting on all cylinders. Wow. Don't get so busy in life that you run past God. Don't get so busy in life that you crowd God out. You don't have time for God. And we've all been there and done that. We got guys sitting here this morning that used to be in the duck woods and on Sundays and used to be in the deer woods on Sundays. Used to do other things on Sundays. It's just another day of the week. And they'd be the first to testify they weren't where they needed to be with the good Lord. We got people now that testify that, hey, I catch as many fish and kill as many deer and ducks and all that, uh, honoring the Lord on His day as I used to when I didn't honor Him on His day. I'm telling you, there's people that could testify that, verbalize that. I'm just glad I'm in the house of God this morning and not the jailhouse. I'm glad I'm not wallowing in my own vomit this morning, spaced out on drugs somewhere. Hey, that's the grace of God, by the way. That's the grace of God. And that's my God. And I love him. That's my God, Brother Freddie, and I love him. Amen. Oh, yeah. Tried to love him for 30 years now, Brother Larry. 30 years, long time. I know you worked out there at the plant a long time. 30 years, long time to do anything. Yeah. I'm honored. I'm honored to be one of God's preachers. If I had a thousand lives to live, I'd want to be one of his preachers in every one of those lives. I love serving Jesus. It's not something I have to do. It's something I get to do. Hadn't God been good to us? He could have thumped me off into hell and let me pay for my own sin, but he didn't do that. Come here, son. Come here. Come here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I'm, I'm, glad I'm in, Brother Freddie. I'm all in. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. Well... I feel better now. I'm going to go home and rest. Yes. Thank you all for being here this morning. Remember the love offering in the back for, for Brother Freddie and his family today. Brother Freddie, we do thank you all. We love you all. Appreciate what you do for the Lord out on the road and, and reaching people for the Lord Jesus Christ. And teenagers, I appreciate you all coming out yesterday and, and passing out all them tracks. Amen. We've had a lot of seeds sown here at Bible Baptist and, and uh, over the years. And I know the Word of God, uh, our, our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. It's not. It's not in vain in the Lord. And let's just keep on keeping on for the Lord. Now remember, not next Sunday, but the next Sunday will be the 30th anniversary. We're going to run our buses. And by the way, I appreciate all our bus workers. So this afternoon, we're going to the house. We have a bus lunch next door. Our bus workers will go out and run the buses this afternoon and reach boys and girls in the afternoon all across the south side. Isn't that a blessing? And I thank God for every little boy and girl. Big old Boomer called me the other day. Boomer played offensive tackle for Elder Ray. He's a member. I'm going to say he's a member of the 350-pound club. He is a big boy. He might be a 400-pounder. I don't know. Boomer is big. 
And uh, Boomer grew up riding the blue bus. Yep. Came to character first. Yep. He plays caveman basketball. He don't play basketball, man. He just like, man, he just clubs you. And I mean, Boomer's just like out there, man. He's knocking bodies down. He's playing. He's a lot of fun, though. He loves Jesus. Amen. He called me the other day. Boomer called me the other day. He said, hey, bro, J.D., how you doing? It's Boomer. I'm thinking, man, Lord, thank you for Boomer. I'm glad Boomer got saved. He sings. He's got a beautiful baritone voice. We brought him out here and had him sing for our church. I love Boomer. Man, I'm glad Boomer got saved. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. And praise the Lord, y'all. I'm telling you, they're out there. We're making a difference for some. And uh, thank you, all you bus workers. Thank you all for getting out there and trying to reach boys and girls. I met a girl the other night. She's one of the meanest girls. I mean, this girl could whoop almost, I mean, I think she could, honestly, I believe she could probably whoop 95% of the boys that ever came to our church, uh, A or B Sunday school. This girl was mean. But I saw her the other day and, uh, at a restaurant, and boy, she got up. She, man, she had a baby when she was like 13 years old. And you know what we did? We just loved her. We didn't know what to do. I want to kick her off the bus, man. She needs somebody to love her. And she got up, and man, she come over, man, we hugged. I was so glad to see her. Well, I thought, man, this is good. You turn right, I could just, uh, if you're coming down the uh, Hillsboro, you take a left there at Betty's Old Fashioned, kind of go down the First Street or whatever that street is there. I could take you right to the house that she lived in. Man, I'm glad she got saved. I'm so glad she got saved. I'm glad she, are y'all listening to me? Hey, they need the Lord. You need the Lord. I need the Lord. It's the grace of God that we're here, not, you know, out somewhere else today. So please pray for our bus workers and pray for the, pray for the bus ministry. By the way, uh, Brother Burton Gates gave us two buses, and we're going to get our, our bus painted, but we gave away one of those buses to another church, a sister church. The church comes in and helps us with the candy carnival, Brother, Brother Graham's church in Benton, Arkansas, and they're already running that bus. And souls are being saved in Benton, Arkansas. We got like seven buses out here, and we got more buses than we know what to do with. And so we just gave one to a church, and their bus was shot, and they were praying about a bus, and we were the answer to their prayers. Somebody say amen right there. And now we got a fruit tree in Benton. From right here in South Arkansas. A fruit tree. Reaching boys and girls in Benton. Praise the Lord. Brother Bob, come dismiss us. Thank you all. Brother Joe, thanks for being here today. Yeah, God bless you. Amen. That's a blessing. I'll be sure and let Brother Joe know you. And he's got a good name. I mean, I'm not partial, y'all, but he's just got a good name. <laughs> like it. It's got a ring to it. Doesn't it, Brother Joe? Yeah. My Joe back in the back, he's saying, yeah, too. We got, we got some Joes around here, so anyway.